Good evening YouTube viewers and subscribers. On my table I have a lot of items here and I'll get around to explaining each and every one of them here shortly. So the Sato 300T engine that I did a few weeks ago that had the glow or had the ignition system on it and it operated on glow ignition was sort of the inspiration for what this project is here and I'd never really given two thoughts about you know, installing an ignition system on a one of my engines before but after that experience with that 300T it kind of gave me the bug to do that so I started doing some research while I had that engine uh, doing some reading uh, researching parts and pieces and talking to people and that type of thing so they basically that's what this is this is going to be part one of a newbie's installation of a glow ignition system on an engine because obviously I've never done it before and my experience is with a glow ignition engine is limited to strictly just that Sato 300T so I figured to get more experience with it I'll do it on one of my engines one of the first decisions I had to make was what engine am I going to put it on I thought about putting it on one of my larger singles or then I also thought about putting it on one of my twins for whatever reason I opted to put it on a twin cylinder engine here and I've got my Magnum FT160 engine here prepped and ready to accept uh, these components but I want to go through for those of you that have never done this before just as I have never done it before I want to go through all of the parts required to do this and then in part two we'll start getting into the actual installation of it so step one is determine what engine you want to install an ignition system on I've already done that I'm going to use my Magnum FT 160 so let me just slide this out of the way here and I've got it on my upright because I just did a, a run of this engine on FAI fuel which I'll explain a little bit further in one of the next upcoming videos as to why I did a run with FAI fuel so I'm just going to move this out of the way here and just point to the items I've got first first this bag here is an RCXL twin cylinder ignition system I purchased this from an eBay vendor they can be purchased from CH Ignitions uh, Adrian in West Palm Beach Florida um, Morris Mini Motors in the UK I chose a place on eBay this was in the US it came here quickly so it was stock uh, this bag here contains the sensor rings and the hall sensor and magnet from CH Ignitions from Adrian in West Palm Florida now I could have got the entire system from him but I chose not to do that so this is the sensor ring and he actually had these sensor rings specifically for the engine I was going to do too so minimal modification was necessary the next thing I've got here is a life battery pack or a lithium iron battery pack this is what I'm going to use to power the receiver or power the ignition system because this ignition accepts a voltage from 6 volts DC to 12 volts DC and this is a uh, 6.6 .6 volt pack I've never had a life battery before I do have a charger for them but I've just never had the opportunity to use one so I figured what the hell I'll kill more birds with one stone and, and it, buy a life battery pack and use that for the first time also now I also have a standard nickel metal hydride uh, 1500 milliamp hour 4.8 volt receiver pack here and that's specifically to power up the tester the ignition tester that I've got and the ignition uh, the ignition tester I've got here is just a small circuit board and you can buy these from Adrian you can buy them from numerous places um, the testing kit usually comes with uh, the circuit board a piston stop tool and maybe a protractor but I just so happen to have a buddy uh, that lives down south of me that had these items and he's uh, letting me borrow them so this is the tester which will be used with this battery <clears throat> I've got a pointing device here and I'll go into that more in detail in video two I've got a bamboo skewer here again more in part two of the video series this tool is called a piston stop tool and this is what you use to thread into your glow plug hole to determine where top dead center is and then also determine uh, and hold the position of the piston at the 
a point where you want to install or have the sensor and the, the magnet line up. Uh, this particular tool I'm not actually going to be able to use because for this engine this length is just too long and with uh, my piston at top dead cylinder, top dead cinder, center, I can't even begin to thread this in here so that's why I have this. And you may say well what the hell is that? And I say well it's just a piece of quarter quarter inch steel rod that you can get from Lowe's. I had it for an airplane wing jig. Um, so I also happen to have, I have had it for many many years, 20 plus years probably, a quarter by 32 die. So basically all I did was I clamped this thing in a vise, oiled it up real good and I continuously oiled it and I threaded my own, I threaded this rod quarter 20 or quarter 32 so that I could use this as my piston stop because this one just won't work for what I need to do. The next item here is a what looks like a little protractor but it's kind of like a, just a degree wheel that you use to uh, align this with top dead center and then you rotate it you know to set your timing and of course I've got a C-clamp here that actually goes with this uh, pointer device. So these are the components necessary to accomplish the task. Um, I'm going to open up this ignition bag here and I'll talk a little bit about the contents of what's in this bag next. Okay so let's see what all is included in this. Now when I ordered this I knew that the majority, and this isn't the first time I've opened this, but I knew that the majority of the parts that were coming in this, but I did not, damn, did not realize that there was a a hall sensor included because it really didn't itemize every single thing that was in here. It showed a couple of pictures. It did not show pictures of a hall sensor, but that's really kind of irrelevant because I've got the hall sensor and magnet and the sensor rings from CNH Ignitions from Adrian. So this portion of this kit. I won't be using. So the next thing that comes out of here is some wire wrap. And I think let's just pull all this stuff out here. There's two bags here that have some spare springs for uh, the caps that go onto the spark plugs. Uh, an RCXL decal, who cares? So the wire wrap, and it came with another wire here that you can uh, wire up. I think this is used uh, if you're going to, let's see here. <clears throat> Not really sure. I don't have a need for that, but it looks like it's supposed to mate with this. So maybe they're thinking you would solder your battery to this. I'm not really sure. So our ignition system here is an automatic advancing angle ignition. I'm not exactly entirely sure what that means at this moment but that's what it is. And it has three leads coming off of it. This is the power, how you power it up. This center lead says tachometer on it so if you have they sell tachometers that you can plug into this thing and actually have your tach on there too. I don't have that. I probably won't be utilizing that um, but because I have other forms of tachometers. And then of course this is the plug that your hall sensor plugs into and then under these bubble wrap things are our 90 degree angle uh, spark plug adapt or spark plug caps. So that is the contents of what you get in this RCXL ignition system. But that isn't all you need because it didn't come with the sensor rings. It didn't come with the rings that actually attach to the engine and the hub itself um, and that's why I contacted Adrian did a little research he has rings pre-made up and that's why I went ahead and purchased these from him because he's done this many times he's got a website or a YouTube channel where he shows a lot of these engines running and uh, I just figured that was a good thing to do so the next thing I need to explain here is that this is not just a plug-and-play type of thing. If you buy these rings from Adrian, you are going to have to do some light machining. And I use that word machining very cautiously because I'm not a machinist by any means. But if you take a look here on this engine, there's this parting line which protrudes up above the engine. There's one on top and the bottom. And this is where the mold for the case, the crankcase, 
was pressed together so there's a ridge here this ridge extends all the way down on both sides and that has to be sanded flush so that this to facilitate the installation of this ring so what I did was I just removed all this stuff wrapped this thing all in plastic taped it all up and protected the front bearing which luckily is also a shielded bearing and I used a Dremel with a grinding or not a grinding wheel a uh, sanding wheel and I just kinda sanded these areas down on both sides of the engine and then I used just a piece of 150 grit sandpaper several pieces actually cut and then I just kinda finished rounding it off like this and you get the look like this and that was the that was all the prep necessary to get these rings from Adrian and CH Ignitions uh, to install on here so the next thing I need to discuss for those that don't know and of course hell I didn't know two weeks ago either really was I want to test my hall sensor in this ring and that's kind of the whole purpose of having this little circuit board here is so that we can actually test these especially when it's on the engine but for setting the timing but I want to test it prior to putting it on because what I thought was odd was this sensor ring was cut out and the hall sensor was glued in here well I kind of assumed and I found out earlier that I was wrong that this would be the side that would be facing the prop that way there's no chance of any rubbing or anything like that potentially uh, wearing or touching or damaging this insulation here the wire but that's actually not the case at all the sensor I think is probably right about here so we're gonna test that so the first thing I'm gonna do is on this little circuit card this side here is where you apply power to power up the circuitry and these two is where you would plug in your hall sensors now there's two uh, connectors here one connector is larger and it's got four leads the other connector is smaller and it has three leads this is for multi-cylinder engines multi meaning more than two uh, this is a twin and single cylinder because they only use one magnet multi-cylinder three and above use multiple magnets so all I'm going to do is just plug this thing in and power this board up you don't see anything here you can't tell that it's powered up until you turn the hall or you get the hall sensor in proximity to the magnet. I'm trying to lay this so that it doesn't want to flip that board all around, but I'm not really having a whole lot of luck there. Maybe, maybe do that. So these connectors here, I'm going to be plugging into a three pin connector. And if you just kind of look at the base of this connector, the white wire is the one that goes to the innermost portion. This is polarized. Okay, so right now I'm energizing and now I want to see this is the magnet. I want to see test that this works. I kind of wish that would just lay there. There we go. So I'm just going to bring this in proximity and rotate it. Okay, so I must be the magnet must be right over the sensor right now. So let's see where that is. <clears throat> okay. So I don't know if you can see that LED on on this board or not. It's turning green. And the beeper sounds. That's important um, for me to at least know that that's how it goes on there so that I know that it's going to go on the engine like this. Because had I put it on like this and it wouldn't work at all, I can demonstrate that also too. Got the magnet here and I'm going to go all the way around the outside of this nothing at all so there's obviously enough distance shielding in this aluminum ring here that it's totally blocking that magnet so that's what I thought was odd I thought it was odd that they would have this set out facing the prop so that it's potentially in harm's way I, I didn't I don't particularly care for that but there's really not much I can do about that at this point the other proximity sensor or the hall sensor that came with a RXL kit. Let me show you that real quick um, just as a comparison. It's basically just uh, I think it's a TO92 uh, three-leaded part. It's basically exactly the same thing 
I'm going to go ahead and power this thing up. But it can be oriented in two different ways. It can be used as a north or a south pole orientation. Just by simply flipping this over because what they do on this is here's your hall sensor and you can either put it in <coughs> the positioning tube one way or the other. Let me plug this in white wire towards the center and let me grab a powerful magnet here and we'll see what the orientation is. Okay, so I must not have the polarity right, so let me flip the sensor over. There you go. Now this sensor seems to detect the magnetic field from a much greater distance than the one that's embedded in that alloy, which is also kind of concerning because uh, I'd actually much rather have one that actually sits up above, whereas the magnets on the outside and not on the inside, it sits up here and then your sensor sits above it. That's kind of what this whole sensor is designed for, but then you have to create your own uh, sensor rings and I'm not really sure, I mean I could have done that, but I, I don't really have the tools or material to do that. I do have magnets, or you could get magnets pretty easily. So anyway, that's just a little uh, quick and dirty on the hall sensors and the positioning and what I needed to know to install the ones from Adrian on my engine.